everybody, welcome back to Is It Kino, your favorite cape shit review podcast. I'm your host, Kino Corner, joined as always by... Who are you going to be today? You're going to be Shang-Chi? You're going to be Candyman? Well, actually, I'm going to be uh, Razor Fist, who was in Shang-Chi, and as Razor Fist was played by an actor named Florian. Oh, shit! Wait, yep. was that the guy with only one hand? Yeah, that was the guy with the one hand and the big blade, and I noticed that the actor The only was white Florian. guy in the whole movie? <laughs> well, uh, aside from Ben Kingsley. Although Ben Kingsley oh, right. is kind of a... Uh, he can be any race He's he an wants. honorary... Yeah, Ben Kingsley's an honorary Indian after Gandhi. Yeah, exactly. He won an Oscar I think for that it. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, Oscars <laughs> he's, he's don't the best, lie. He's the best acting Indian. <laughs> Well, folks, we've got a, a double feature, double hitter for you. We saw the movies Candyman and Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. Kino, where do we even begin? I mean, we've got so much Kino to discuss. I know oh, we yeah. both think these movies were, I mean, Ten Rings, forget that. This was a 10 out of 10 rings movie, in my opinion. Candyman, so, yeah. too, I'd give that 10 candies out of 10. <laughs> Yeah, today, um, this is on the, the first time on the Monkey and Big Show on the Is It Kino podcast. Today, instead of this normal white supremacist drivel that you usually get from us, <laughs> you are getting a POC special. You are getting the That's black right. African experience and the Asian, Asian American uh, Chinese experience on the other hand. And who better to review the experiences of minority groups than two white guys on YouTube? Now, some people might argue that it's a bit pandering and maybe inauthentic, insincere, that we're, we're finally reviewing movies about minorities and we just double them up on one episode, whereas the white movies get, you know, full hour-long episodes. Uh, do we have any counter-argument to that? Just in case somebody wants to make that argument. Maybe if the movies were better we would give them a full hour. <laughs> what do you mean? Don't these movies have like 98% on Rotten Tomatoes? You think the critics might have this one wrong? You know what? The critics have never been wrong before, but right now I'm starting to question whether critics might be, mm, you know, in favor of Disney properties or maybe they're afraid of being mm. called racist for not liking certain films. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying that 98% or whatever for uh, Shang-Chi seems a little bit... Um, <laughs> it's the best Marvel movie just, ever made. Seems a little bit generous. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's do a little game I like to call the racism test. Kino, it will be up to you to decide which film do we discuss first. Are you going to say Black Candyman. Lives Matter or are you going to stop Asian oh. hate? You're going to go Candyman immediately? Candyman, yeah. Wow, Candy man. like, you know, American <laughs> politics are always benefiting the blacks and undercutting the Asians. Like, this is, like, we believe in affirmative a action on this podcast. That is um, true. This is so the only affirmative action <laughs> promotional podcast on all of YouTube, I do believe. All right, Candyman, 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 Candyman. All right, now uh, he'll, maybe, sh maybe he'll show up and he can, you know, t tell us about the making of the film. Well, he only kills white people, so you might uh, Yeah, he fucked. does. No, there's one scene, there's one weird, like, out-of-place scene in the Candyman thing where he kills, like, the black kid, and it just seems yeah, like... we'll, that we'll was... get to that. Yeah. We'll get okay. to that, because I, I agree, that is the one scene... If I if I was at, uh, at the cutting room, and I got to choose what goes on the floor, it would definitely yeah. be that scene. It made no sense. It does not sense. make any sense. No. <laughs> so Candyman, if you don't know, is a horror film from the mind of Jordan Peele, who's just rewriting a movie that came out, what, in the 90s? And not even, like, a super great movie, too. Like no. Just, like, the most, like, average kind of meh horror film that came out in the 90s. Yes, Jordan Peele is going to take it and make it woke and make it cool and hip and... No, like, it already was lame back then, it's still lame now. I, I mean, just to put my cards on the table, when it comes to horror films, uh, I don't know if there's a disconnect in my brain, or if I'm autistic, or maybe I'm just too smart for the movie, but when it comes to horror specifically, it only works on me when it's grounded in reality. I, I never feel any sense of dread or fear when it's like a supernatural thing or there's a ghost or a goblin or a monster because my brain knows that shit's fake. 
But when I watch, you know, a horror movie that is grounded in reality, then I can actually maybe empathize with the characters more, put myself in their shoes, because in real life, there's never going to be a Candyman who appears in a mirror to stab me, you know? Yeah. Uh, do you, how, how do you feel about horror films? Do so, they affect you in any way? I'm, I'm similar to you, although, excuse me, um, when I am watching these horror films grounded in reality and I see the villains, um, I usually don't feel any kind of dread. I just say, wow, that's literally me. Um, that's, <laughs> that's how I feel. What, is, is that how you <laughs> felt with the, the villains in Green Room? Yeah, I felt that with the villains in Green Room with Henry Portrait of the Patrick Serial Stewart. Killer. Patrick Stewart. Patrick <laughs> Stewart. You, you saw Patrick Stewart in Green Room and thought that's literally me? Yeah, do you want to come to my uh, my punk club? Uh, you know, I'm yeah. having some good performances up there tonight. No, Nazi um, punks, with, <laughs> fuck off! With, with most horror movies, I honestly, like, I can't even remember the last time I've actually been scared by a horror movie. So when I go into them... I'm looking at them more like, uh, is it interesting? Maybe are the deaths cool? Um, is the drama interesting? You know what I mean? Like, is it exploring cool concepts or something like that? Like, I do like the original, you know, like Nightmare on Elm Street for the kind of the, you know, the the dream reality sort of thing. And I like. Is that Halloween. the one with Scary Terry? That's the one with uh, Freddy. Um, yeah, Scary Terry. He keeps yeah. saying bitch. Yeah, and then with Johnny Depp is in that one too. Um, I think it's Johnny Depp. Yeah, and then I like the original Halloween because it's very much like a like an old school thriller, you know, as a slasher film. Like there, there's well, a lot speaking of, of Halloween. When I went to go see Candyman, I guess there's a new Halloween movie called Halloween Kills. Yeah. And b before Candyman, I'm not fucking joking. They played the trailer for Halloween Kills literally three times. Really? I've never seen them repeat a trailer <laughs> once. They played it three fucking times. They Somebody wanted to fucked see up it. at the computer because <laughs> it was absurd. I thought it was a prank. I could not believe it. <laughs> they want you to see the film. They're like, oh, I'm not going to. <laughs> I mean, let the... him burn. I heard that like a hundred fucking times. <laughs> Did you see the uh, the David Gordon Green Halloween the reboot or? Sequel? I haven't seen so... any of them. Oh, the uh, well, the original is really good, and the and the reboot I, I thought was pretty good. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about Candyman, and yeah, I don't necessarily get scared. Like I don't get scared really by any horror film, but I don't get scared by Candyman especially because here's the thing about Candyman: the only way to get killed by him is if you basically commit suicide. Is if you go to the <laughs> to the mirror and you say Candyman five times, asking him to kill you, and then. Then you get shocked and you're supposed to be scared that the dude comes up and kills you. It's like, what? It's like going to Dr. Kevorkian and being like, yeah, like put me down. And then like when he starts putting you down, you're like what the fuck are you doing? Like, just stop this. And then you're, now you're, already, you're already dead. Like, I don't see how that's scary. I'm sorry. Yeah, and and uh, if I'm gonna be uh, you know extremely obvious here, folks, uh, candy is not scary. Hello, <laughs> you should have been spinach man, uh, uh, get a job man, uh, <laughs> stop selling drugs on the street man. So many Lack other of types of man he could have been. <laughs> yeah, food stamps like, man. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many scarier things he could have been for the community that this film, you know, is uh, appealing to. The candy is not scary. Razor no, blades and candy, maybe. Yeah, and that's just sort of like that. Um, I, you know, I, you know, a movie that I thought that that did the whole like razor blades and candy a lot better was that. Uh, um, what was it called? It was called Oh Trick or Treat. It's like a short films kind of all meshed oh, okay. up into one. I thought that, you know, the, there, there was a story in there about the razor blades and candy, and I thought that that was a lot better than in this, because the razor blades and candy in this is just like, it's like a throwaway thing to justify police brutality, and basically, candy, the new Candyman, so the old Candyman, for anyone has, who hasn't seen it, it's about this, like, well, it's a direct um, prequel, or I guess this is a direct sequel to the original Candyman, because... Uh, the original Candyman is about them, is about the white woman trying to save the baby who was kidnapped by the Candyman, and, you know, they explain that kind of early on. 
as like it's like this urban legend or whatever. Oh, so um, the the background lore of this movie is actually just ripping off the other movie? Yeah, the background lore of this movie is just the first film. Oh, so it's even less original than I thought. Mm-hmm. Okay, good job, yeah. Jordan Peele. <laughs> yeah, the background lore of this movie is just the original film, but it's like, okay, okay so now the baby's grown up. But in the original film, Candyman is this kind of like violent kind of demonic presence and he likes um, killing innocent people. But there's a difference in the Candyman. So he's based on the guy from the 1800s, you know, that got his arm chopped off and the bees all on it, whatever. Yeah. But now in this one, they kind of do like a revisionist history on the character. (laughs) Yeah, you don't say. (laughs) And now it's like, now it's like Michael Brown and George Floyd or Candyman. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you did mention that when it comes to horror, you know, you might enjoy it based on the themes explored and, and you know, stuff like that. This movie, I thought, has a pretty decent premise. Uh, I, I enjoy stories of, you know, black revenge. I like Django Unchained and Native Son and all those things, you know, like the, the black man has to fight back against a society that uh, is, you know, keeping the black man down. And this is a story, you know, very much out, uh, in the in the realm of the George Floyd era of uh, current politics, where I guess the backstory is Candyman was wrongfully killed by the police because he was framed or wrongfully blamed for putting razor blades in candy. And yeah, now he's like a ghost <laughs> and he, he kills people who says his name. I don't, there's a big disconnect. Like he, sh- if you want to do this movie, Jordan Peele and whoever the fuck directed this shit, for real, why don't you just make it in a police station? Clearly, he has a grudge against the police, as a lot of black people do, and I'm fine with that. I'll watch a full horror film of this fucking demon hook-handed freak slashing up police. Make that the whole movie. Why? Like, what is the fucking point of going to... They, they go to a high school in Chicago and, well, actually, they called it, it's not a high school, it's a college prep, which is very important, very important distinction, because at this high school, or at this college prep uh, building in Chicago, uh, it's all white people, which I find except, very except, offensive. Except for, like, the one black girl that went in there, yeah. and it seemed like she was working with Candyman, because, like... Now, I don't know whole... if you've been to Chicago, Kino Corner. Uh, <laughs> My it's, family's it's from not Chicago. A, it's not 98% uh, white people, I don't believe, but I guess if you're yeah. at a college prep <laughs> building, yeah. it's only going to be white people, according to Jordan Peele. But why, why is Candyman killing 15-year-old white kids? Just kill the police! Just kill they the call, fucking police! They called his name five times, didn't you know? They, yeah, they said, so right, and, and, stupid! Well, then, What's well, the then, fucking the point random, of the movie? No, so here's the thing I didn't get about that scene. So some random black girl comes in, to like go what take a shit in the stall and then she starts like cowering and Candyman is just like yeah I'm not gonna do anything with you. What's the point of like focusing on the black girl in there to be like yeah the these white girls who are racist against this black girl they're getting what they what they deserve because they said you know they banged on her stall while she was you know taking a shit and now Candyman is chopping their heads off like in yeah. retaliation like it was. It was bizarre, and yeah, Candyman like, gets hell? he gets wrongfully assassinated by the police, and now he's just out to kill all white people who say his name in the well, mirror. Yeah, and, and, so, and he. But the no, thing no, is, I wanna, I wanna the, say this, some of the though. black characters do it, and he doesn't kill them until this weird flashback when he does it one time. Yeah, he does it one time in this scene that makes no sense in the context of the film, where it's just like the little kid is he supposed to be? the main character when he's younger, it, it doesn't really make it that clear. I mean, I only saw the movie once. So I'm not going to watch it He was it the again. laundry man. I believe it yeah. was laundry man as a kid. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he's just like, I want to play with you. And they're like, we're playing grown-up games. And they go in there and they say Candyman five times. And then he goes in there and they're dead. And like, that's the yeah, one time What that... the fuck, Candyman? I thought you were on <laughs> I thought you were on their side. You're supposed to only kill Whitey and the police. Why the fuck are you killing a, an eight-year-old black girl, dude? <laughs> well, and the the funny thing too is like in the first Candyman, uh, the Candyman says like, yeah, I like killing innocent people. And then the new Candyman, he's, he basically says like, yeah, no white people are innocent. It's like, it's like, okay, so you've just gone from like this base, you know, demon that just wants to just 
kill random people for fun to uh you know like i'm i'm here for a political agenda when obviously you're i don't know you're just you're not even like living in this world or in this realm you're just coming here to kill random people who say your name in a mirror also yeah, what's his I motive bring who's who's he getting revenge on also i want to bring this up right and i didn't see anybody talking about this we, you know i was discussing it with other people and whatever so you know the the guy so so the main guy is like the main character is like this hack artist um who decides he's gonna make Candyman like his next art piece right like this is gonna be so edgy so cool he's gonna you know comment on the black community and in Chicago or, you know, uh, Cabrini Are you Green telling me all those giant murals of George Floyd are not true art? <laughs> is that what you're trying to say? Look, I'm no art critic, uh, but, um, but are they going to be remembered 500 years from now? Will George they Floyd? be in yeah. the Louvre? Will they be in the Louvre alongside the Mona Lisa? That's my question. Will they uh, be? The Mona Lisa will have been destroyed by then <laughs> to be replaced with the black Mona Lisa. <laughs> but anyways, I want to get to this. I want to get to this before I completely forget what I'm even talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so he has this like this exhibit, right? Of talking about Candyman, and the the big part of the exhibit is this is this mirror and it's and the people get this instruction to say his name five times and my question was so nobody in this entire night right all these hundreds of people were coming through and looking at the art nobody looked into that mirror and said candy man five times even though it was there in instructions to look in the mirror and say it five times it didn't happen until the next day when the you know the the fat dude and his you know uh jailbait were you know fucking and you know she decided to say can't candy man five times i'm like so no one said that at the actual art exhibit for one yeah that's that kind of uh that's kind of brutally cruel to this artist nobody was engaging with his exhibit the entire <laughs> night yeah exactly everyone's like it's a fucking mirror <laughs> you know <laughs> He did not make it clear that you're supposed to open the mirror like a medicine cabinet and all the paintings are, I guess, in the extra room. They have an entire extra room behind a mirror. So this art exhibit just has a hole in the wall that he put a mirror on and then, yeah. and then he has an entire room dedicated just to his art. See, I mean, this is just, what's going on here? How much action. extra rent are they paying in Chicago to have this whole extra room that is unaccessible? Yeah, well, inaccessible is the word, monkey. Let's be. Uh, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Let's try to talk. This is like 19 this. minutes into Izakino. I can say whatever the fuck <laughs> I want. Nobody's <laughs> listening to this shit. Except Robel. She'll be listening to this. Uh, um, well, she's going to yeah. love the next part of this podcast. It's all about her. <laughs> yeah, she asked me. She said, "Can you uh um can you can you flirt with monkey on here and i called her a, what, what's the term for a fuji fuji shari or what's the for the um weebs who um are totally into gay shit um oh i don't know uh, i forget the, i forget the word i'm not a big enough weeb here uh i think there's a 4chan board about it you could probably go look it up <laughs> oh yeah fujoshis fujoshis yeah, so she's she she's uh, Fujoshi. That's the only reason why she's uh, listening to this this far thus far. Um, but yeah, he has, gets a whole room to himself, and it's all about how police beat up black men. And it's like, okay, uh, <laughs> sure, like you, it's like, wow, you open up a mirror and you just see like police brutality. I, I don't have to open up uh, a closet to see that. I just have to go on 4chan.org. <laughs> oh, I just have to look out my window. <laughs> yeah, oh just, yeah, you're you Look there. out the window in Chicago, you just see a thousand police officers <laughs> beating black men in the streets constantly. You know, you know what, Monkey? This is this is actually making me think of something that we are we should have gotten reactor for this. Didn't he live in the south side of Chicago? Yeah, uh yeah. he also lives at uh Tim Pool's <laughs> fucking castle in the mountains, so I don't know if oh, he has yeah. access to a movie theater. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, that's true. Although it would have been cool to uh, have him, you know, document himself going to Cabrini Green and seeing Candyman five times in the mirror there. <laughs> well, I don't want to go on about Candyman all goddamn day. 
Uh, yeah. Should we just go to our final judgments and just declare whether or not it's Kino? Yeah, I just have a couple. I have a couple more thoughts on it. Um, okay. It's gonna be very, very fast. So for one, none of the deaths are necessarily exciting because it's like, oh wow, they said Kano Man five times. I wonder if they're gonna die. You know, it's like, well, yeah. So none of them are that exciting. I kind of liked the whole how he was. Um, in like that mirror world because in the original movie he just kind of comes into the real world and but i liked in this movie they kind of have him in this mirror world it's like a parallel dimension you know of yeah it's um, a cool effect when you can see him interacting with the real world but you can only actually yeah. see him in reflections yeah like i did like that i mean if the rest of the movie was better it would have been really cool but um uh yeah no a lot of it was just i i thought it was just kind of played out and trite and i think that it let its ideologies and its political motivations sort of um get in the way of its storytelling um and then also the last shot where they try to make him look like a young uh version of the candy man cgi like they de-aged him oh that's what and that was yeah that was so bad it's like wow yeah. so this is the last shot of the film this is the last thing i'm gonna remember from the film and it's like really bad cgi <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I think the, the whole final confrontation and final scene was, it just felt like it was thrown together at the last minute because all of a yeah. sudden the laundry man and the, there's a character we see in a flashback who is doing the laundry as a little boy and then he sees mm -hmm. Candyman and it's his fault that Candyman got caught by the police because he screams like a little twerp. But uh, I guess this guy loves laundry so much that he dedicates the rest of his life to it because every other scene of him <laughs> yeah. is just like he's hanging <laughs> out true. in the back of a laundromat. <laughs> like, what the fuck? He, what? Of course, he does the laundry <laughs> in the flashback at the beginning as a child, yeah. and then that's just his whole character. Why is he always at this fucking laundromat? But that's the whole film, right? Like, everyone is, like, their character is whatever it is they like to do. So the gay guys just yeah. act gay for each other, and that's all they do. Fuck they yeah, just, dude. <laughs> the gay guys are just there to act gay. You gotta, and then, this movie was the, <laughs> I, I mean, uh, ironically, this movie's the antithesis to buck breaking. If, if Tariq Nasheed saw that this interracial gay couple living in some Chicago apartment, he would have a fucking aneurysm. I really hope for the sake of his health, he did not see this film. You did see my, uh, I retweeted Tariq the Sheets tweet. Oh, he, yeah, he, uh, was that Little Nas X? <laughs> Little Nas posing, X had the... He's posing pregnant? Po posing pregnant, and he just quote tweeted and said, buckbreakingmovie.com. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so I guess, uh, Laundry Man decides, uh, that he's like the, he's the priest of Candyman and he's going to help the main character be become Candyman by kidnapping his girlfriend and then, like why did the girlfriend have to be kidnapped? Why is she hogtied in this fucking old chapel? Uh, like why did she have to be there? It just felt so forced and unnecessary yeah. for these characters well, to come it, together at the end. That might feel forced and unnecessary for you because you've never tied up a woman, but trust uh, me, true. once you have, um, it, <laughs> he you, can't you'll resist. understand why it's necessary. <laughs> yeah, you'll understand why But then why the, the, big, uh, the, the big climax <laughs> is the girlfriend runs away. Her boyfriend is now like the embodiment of the new Candyman. He's all fucking, uh, he's got his hook He is George Floyd, up and Michael Brown, Trayvon Martin. Yeah, um, he, he carries the you know their inherited <laughs> will. He's going to carry out their mission. Mm -hmm. And he really does because... The one clever moment of the movie is that the the police show up, they kill Laundry Man, uh, they yeah. they think Candyman's dead, and they arrest the girl. And there's like the just there's no sense of humanity from any of the police officers, and I, it really no. bugs me. Like there's no nuance. Every single police officer, according to this movie, is just a one-dimensional racist piece of shit. If at the very beginning, when the kid is going to do his laundry and he walks by all these police officers, he drops a sock, and it would have been so simple to have a police officer like, because they they see that he dropped his sock, but he doesn't notice. Just have a, have a police officer pick up the sock and hand it to him, like a 
you know, a courteous, normal human being. But no, even that is too much for these Chicago cops. Every, no, nobody becomes a cop because they want to protect and serve the community. They just want to beat black people and have a license to do so. That's what the movie implies. Uh, and when this woman gets arrested at the end, even though she's done nothing wrong, the police chief is like, well, you better say what we want or else we're locking your black ass up. <laughs> and she says, hey, um, okay, I'll do what Candy you man. want, but can, can I look in the rear view mirror real quick? Like, okay, I see where this is going. <laughs> Great, what a great exactly. gambit. Let me look in the rear view mirror. Okay. I, I don't see why not. <laughs> yeah, and then Candyman comes back but doesn't kill her like how the you know the rest of the movie yeah. worked. He just kills he everyone comes, around her. She weaponizes <laughs> Candyman to kill all of the white police, which is cool. I'm fine with that. It's like a clever ending to the film. But why why does he kill the little black girl in the flashback for saying Candyman? But every other instance, he's just killing Whitey. Why yeah. the fuck? Like, just take that scene out. We should ask Jordan Peele. You yeah. know, maybe maybe it's some sort of like deep down he resents his blackness because he's half Jewish, half black. Like, he yeah, only resents Jewishes. black women. He, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Isn't he married to a Jewish lady who's like, uh, he, he's like, uh. And his family is the founder of BuzzFeed. I think that's his brother-in-law. <laughs> is the CEO uh, of BuzzFeed. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll look this up while we're still Sounds talking. like that family has, you know, generated I'm... so much artistic content to this world, and we have to be so grateful for what they've provided for us. BuzzFeed uh, and these amazing films. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, it's it's like the, the founder of BuzzFeed is in his family, BuzzFeed CEO family it's hard to find these i i'm sounding like reactor right now um just making shit up and then trying to find the source <laughs> yeah yeah no i but, which is different than tim pool who just reads the uh um reads the headlines and then you know just kind of reacts to the headlines and doesn't really do anything else right uh, I, I have no clue. I've I've never watched a Tim Pool video in my entire life, other than when he was talking about me. So I I couldn't tell you. It's um okay. It's hard for me to find it, but I'll you know what I'll find it. I'll find it this week and I'll link it to you and you can put it in the description. Um, uh, trust me, I don't care, and I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> I could not give less of a shit about Jordan Peele's fucking family. <laughs> really truly don't care uh this movie yeah. though i'll say uh it was pointless 70 percent of the film is about art critics being mean to a guy for his shitty art and then it's like ah oh, but Candyman's gonna kill these art critics fuck yeah i don't care i don't care about yeah. art critics in chicago being killed by a demon just make the movie a police revenge story where the guy who was killed by the police you know, you could have a whole setup. Oh, this this is the most corrupt police precinct in Chicago, and they're all they all they just beat the black people and steal their drug money, blah. blah. And then it's just like, uh, you know, the whole movie can take place like the second and third act can take place just in the police station. Candyman's appearing in all the mirrors and shit. Don't even have to say his name. He's just there. He's slaying the cops. Maybe there's like one good cop in the precinct. He's, uh, he's like Mike Ehrmantraut's son. You know, he's not gonna break bad. He's gonna be the good cop who fixes the system. And he's the last one standing and Candyman sees, you know what? Maybe all cops are not bad. Maybe this guy, you know, we just need some good eggs to go in there, hatch into these chickens and take over the coop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But no, this movie decides all cops are unredeemable bastards and deserve to be slaughtered. Uh, yeah, not for me. I'd say it's not, you know, not a great movie. Yeah, same here. It was just like, I don't know. I just thought it was a pretty pointless, stupid horror movie that um, I watched one time and I paid seven dollars to see it, and that was definitely too much. <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely too much to see it. Well, I'll, I'll give Maybe. it this, and this might be controversial. I think Candyman better film than Shang Chi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Where do and, you draw the line? And, and get this. Okay, so I just looked it up, right? Jordan Peele is married to Chelsea Peretti, 
and Chelsea Peretti's brother Jonah co-founded BuzzFeed and the Huffington Post. Okay. So, Is Chelsea Peretti so, an actress? Yeah, actress, comedian, and Is writer. Is she in Brooklyn Nine-Nine? Yeah, she is. Oh, okay. I like her. Yeah. I don't know much about her, but I don't know. Like, it's nothing against her. It's just like, I just thought that was funny that Jordan Peele yeah. is is uh, is related to the co-founder of BuzzFeed. He's all he's making all these, like, milk-toasty race-baiting movies. It's like, okay. <laughs> it runs in the family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I would well, say that I would say that Candyman is a Kino. I didn't really care for it. Um, n- not to say that, it, like, it's 90 minutes long, so, you know, if you can watch it on Netflix or wherever it comes out, like, it's not that long. If you want a stupid horror movie, I watch a lot of dumb horror films. Gosh, I watched Blumhouse Presents Fantasy Island last night. That was... You know, it putting it puts everything into perspective. You know, because that movie was like so incredibly, insanely stupid. I was like, wow. Candy that has the like, the Hispanic guy from End of Watch, yeah. right? Yeah, Michael Pena. Yeah, Pena. Yeah, he was in the yeah. Dora movie. I like that guy. <laughs> that movie is so dumb. You should watch it just because of how insanely dumb it is. It's actually the fun Fantasy to watch. Island. Fantasy Island. Yeah. Okay. And but um but no like it's. I guess the movie, like, with its filmmaking, it's fine. Like, it's just fine. It's just middle of the road, I thought. Um, a it lot has of a lot of... Uh, I'd say Candyman has a lot of cool visuals and a, a lot of cool tracking shots that are symmetrical the whole time I thought was pretty cool. I like the uh, the silhouettes of the paper uh, that they're doing. Yeah, I like the silhouettes of the paper stuff. Um, it's just that, you know, a lot of... the. It's just that it's not scary for a horror film. And as I said earlier, it lets its own ideology get in the way of a storytelling when it should be, yeah. uh, it should be the opposite. Like this, the ideology should come out of the story and it should be something that's felt rather than something that's kind of like more like told to you or shoved down your throat, you know, and it should be like, wow, I kind of, I don't know, like, it, it's something that I can't exactly explain in words, but I think a lot of people would understand. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's Kino. I don't think it's really worth seeing unless you're watching it for free on a Saturday night on Netflix or something, if I'm going to be honest. Is it better or worse than the original Candyman? i say that they're actually about the same quality. Oh, okay. Um, the original Candyman I didn't care for. Uh... The, you know, and the thing about both Candyman, right, is that they they play up like, oh, bees, right? Like bees are going to play a big part of it. Yeah. And, and then they don't. I, I'm a guy who bees are one of my biggest fears. And uh, even in this movie, it didn't really give me anything. It didn't yeah. percolate my senses really at all. In, even in the original film, it has a bee on the poster. And bees play almost no part in the original film and in this movie it's like oh he stings him and that kind of starts that transformation to Candyman. I at least liked how they decided to play up the bees in this one as opposed to the original which it just seemed like they had bees as as an aesthetic choice for like two scenes. So I did like that but um, no on on the whole not Kino. Well let's move on to you know, much like America moved on from, you know, Black Lives Matter to stop Asian hate, let's move on to Shang-Chi. Uh, and just real quick, do you think uh, Shang-Chi or Candyman was the better viewing experience? Honestly, I would say Candyman. Yeah, me too. Yeah, Candyman was a better... Candyman was at least an hour shorter. <laughs> Well, I know you you have a real big crush on Aquafina and she is uh, displayed prominently in this film, so I guess I'll, I'll give the plot synopsis. I'll start it off with you. Tell us all about Shang-Chi so, and the Legend of the Ten Rings. So, for one, going into it, I actually thought it was Legend of the Nine Rings because for me, just nine rings sound better than ten rings. I, I don't know what it was. I didn't care enough about the movie going into it to actually know what the title was. But, um... Yeah, so Shang-Chi... I, I think that the title is stupid. Like, yeah, what other Marvel stupid... movie has that type of title? Just call it Shang-Chi. Why do you have to add this yeah. extra shit on it? Like, it's Snow White in the Huntsman bullshit. 
Yeah, it, it's so stupid. It, it feels like a uh, like a made for TV or like straight to DVD animation title. You know, like something something. Yeah, the, the Marvel Legend movies. If these are all supposed to, you know, have similar aesthetics and fit in the same universe, Marvel movies have like title, and then the next one is title uh, ellipses or title. Uh, uh, what the fuck yeah, is that? It's, Col- it's like title Thor. colon subtitle. You know, Captain like, America yeah. colon the Winter Soldier. Don't do th- just if you want to do a fucking colon, do Shang Chi colon the Legend of the Ten Rings. What's all this and bullshit? Or do just Shang Chi colon the Ten Rings. Like that sounds more imposing. That sounds more important than the Legend of the Ten Rings. It, it sounds like. It sounds like Titanic 2, the legend continues, you know, yeah, like, yeah. and that's what it sounds like to me, but whatever. So going into, I, I went into this completely blind, um, just figuring like, oh, it's just going to be like every other Marvel film. And I was proven and right. And you were quickly proven wrong. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. They're speaking Chinese in this. This is nothing like any of the other Marvel movies. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I know I put you in charge of the synopsis, but already I need to interrupt with no. uh, another diatribe. It's fucking... <laughs> the, the, these movies are made for children, okay? Let, let's just get that out there. Marvel movies, it's a family <laughs> brand. You take all the kids and the grandkids and the grandparents. Everybody goes to go see the new Marvel flick. That's why they all yeah, make billions, because they're made for everybody. What dude, fucking kid people... wants to read subtitles <laughs> for 20 minutes? The opening dude, 20 minutes people... are all in fucking Chinese. Dude, half the people in my theater were like eight years old. It yeah, was you think, literally all You think all those kids. kids can read that fast? <laughs> no. You're not no. going to read those subtitles? No. They, they were just sitting there staring at nothing for 20 minutes. <laughs> and, and second of all, these fucking cape shit movies, they're not known for having the best script. So you probably don't want to literally have the script transcribed on the screen because it, it really points out the flaws in the writing when you do so. You, you kind of want to just have the, the visual effects uh, distract you from the writing. You don't want to put the script on screen. Uh, I don't know what We've they known were each thinking. other, Monkey, we've known each other for 10 years. You were my best friend because when we were in middle school, the guy called me Korean and I said, I'm Chinese. And he got mad the, at me. So the, he came up the to guy, me and you started singing Hotel the, California. No, no, no. You fucked it up. You fucked it up. The backstory of their friendship is that somebody called him Gangnam Style. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gangnam Style. That's right. <laughs> and that's how they became friends because a bully called him Gangnam Style. <laughs> Wow, man, if someone called me, I mean, because my, my heritage is Irish, and if someone called me, gosh, Bono, or the streets <laughs> the streets have no name, wow, you're you too. I'd be like, no, I'm not. I'm American. <laughs> like, what yeah, the fuck? Yeah, like, you super so mad. Stupid. Oh, I would get super mad, dude. I would like... <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. And, no, but like, okay, I'm, I gotta, like, give the plot, although... If you can imagine any Marvel movie, just imagine it, but with uh, a coat of yellow paint. That's essentially what Shang-Chi is, where it's it's a man who has these amazing powers where he literally is unkillable. They say that in the film. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and, he's, he's um, lived for over a thousand years. Yeah, his dad is, well, his dad has lived for over a thousand years. His dad is like invincible and he's passed down from his dad and from his mom who comes from this like other dimension where they're like they use the power of the gods or something like that and so he's got like all this like i'm like both you know the descendant of an immortal man and descendant of the gods and i can i have the ultimate kung fu and no one can kill me and you know whatever but you know he's just living a regular joe lifestyle somehow surviving in san francisco is just a valet driver i have no idea how if you know the prices in San Francisco, there's no way you can survive. Well, he's living a in a garage. Driver. Dude, his, even his garages over there. just some guy's garage. Dude, even garages over there. San Francisco is like the most expensive city in the U.S. Uh, trust me, I've, I'm from San Francisco. I don't know how he survives there on a val- on, a, on a valet job, but whatever. Well, I like you know, that... It's like, um... He's, he's doing his valet job with his best friend Aquafina, and like they have, you know. Let's not talk about Aquafina. 
Well, it, just, it reminded me of this episode of Nathan for you, where he's he's trying to spice up this nail salon. So he says, "Okay, what if this nail salon provides valet parking?" So naturally, oh, but the, the, the nail drivers. salon, yeah, the technicians have to do it. So you have Asian women parking your car, and uh, you know, naturally, the comedy ensues. But uh, in this film, that's not played for laughs, which I think it should have been. You know, if if I'm gonna get my fancy two hundred thousand dollar car parked by a valet, I don't know if I want Aquafina behind the wheel. But you know what? Maybe I'm just buying into the stereotypes. Maybe I deserve to be killed by uh, by a rice man or or you know whatever. No, whatever the Asian version of Candyman is, like a egg yeah. man is gonna come get me for being racist. What was the, what was the Sam Hyde one on the uh, you know his like. Remember this the MDE sketch where it's like they're writing the the mean things that they call themselves on the foam cups and throwing it. Remember that one and the Asian kid says I haven't rice seen it. calculator. <laughs> it's rice calculator that the Asian guy called and yeah. th- tosses it. Yeah, it was that. It was a sketch. Toss it, you know, just write the. And it was basically just a way for all these people to say all these slurs on Adult Swim, but. Um, but no, so yeah, so they're working as these valets until big bad, you know, men, when they're on the bus going to work, just living their normal lives, these big bad men um, come and they want to take his, you know, his his necklace and they get into a kung fu fight on the bus, which honestly is the best scene in the whole film, by far. The bus. And scene, my issue with that th- is, have you seen Captain Marvel? Uh... Why would I want to see Captain Marvel? Well, Captain Marvel also has a 20-minute fight scene on a bus that was almost identical. So I'm wondering why uh, why they couldn't do literally anything else that they haven't already done in these movies before. Well, yeah, I think you're giving them too much credit. But um, How many 20-minute so- <laughs> bus fights do we need? Just fucking do it anywhere else. You're in San Francisco. Do it on a fucking trolley or something, dude. Like, Captain yeah, Marvel literally card. already did this. Yeah, they could have done it on a streetcar to make it more San Francisco. Honestly. Or, or just well, have no, the movie we'll... take place anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah, just not. Yeah, exactly. They should have been... Honestly, it should have been in China the whole time, to be honest. Um, but, so... So anyway, so, you know, he figures out that it's his dad that's coming after him. I don't know how he figures it, but I guess he just knows it. And... Um, Razor Fist is the one guy that has like the big knife for for an he arm. He has a for razor a for a fist. Yeah, but Razor Fist is also the name of a uh, YouTuber. Um, you know, uh, so I was a little confused because of that, but whatever. So he says, "Okay, I'm gonna go to Macau to go to my sister because I guess one of them said that they're going after his sister." So he goes to meet his sister. And his sister is the head of this big fighting ring in Macau. And of course they go to China and it's all like, wow, China's amazing. <laughs> like there's like a two or three minute sequence about how amazing China is. They're just China filming is. like casinos. Like that's the yeah. best uh, architecture China has to offer is Las Vegas style casinos. Yeah, well that's Macau. And um, but yeah, it, it's it's filmed in this way where Aquafine is like looking out the the window and she's just like in awe of everything. I'm like, bitch, I've driven down the strip in Las Vegas before and I was not yeah, looking bitch, out with awe. You live a, it's a five hour drive to Vegas. You didn't yeah. have to fly across the world to see this shit. Yeah, exactly. It looks the exact same, but whatever. So they get to this fighting ring, and then it's like they're all cosplaying like they're in Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the guy's like, yeah, we stream all these fights onto the dark web, and I wanted to fucking blow up the cinema right then. <laughs> was like, streaming all the fights to the dark web? Alright, so who's watching it? Pedophiles? <laughs> like, what is this? You know, it's just literally it is, uh... kung fu fights. You don't have to stream this to the dark web. This isn't illegal. They're just kung fu fighting. No one's actually getting well, hurt. They have like superpowers and monsters and shit. And you know, this world that was impacted by Thanos for five years, they're not ready to see that superpowers exist, evidently. <laughs> uh, evidently. The, peop- the people like, who wow. like worship the Avengers and know all about superpowers and heroes, you know, this stuff has to stay underground. Nobody can know. <laughs> yeah, you have to have a Tor browser 
in order to watch two dipshits <laughs> fight each other on the internet. It's like, didn't you know that Bum Fights was on YouTube for like the longest time? <laughs> Why don't they just stream the Odyssey or something? <laughs> like, they'll allow it, you know? Just, they, you know what? They could have really used this movie to, uh, to promote new tech. They could have been like, yeah, we streamed to Odyssey and BitChute. <laughs> like, I don't know. No, I just thought that was stupid. So anyways, it turns out his sister runs the place. He has to fight his sister, of course. Well, his let's sister rewind is a little bit. Woman. We gotta rewind, because yeah. the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you, you never know who's gonna oh, show yeah, up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody from and any of the long. movies. Anybody from any Only of the, the movies Chinese can show guy. up. <laughs> yeah, Only the, the Chinese guy They finally Dr. get an Chinese Asian does. movie. So they take the one <laughs> other Asian guy from any of the 25 <laughs> Marvel films, and they have to throw him in. Now, here's my problem with Wong. And if you don't know who Wong is, he's uh, he's Doctor Strange's sidekick, I guess. The I guess in uh, Infinity War, he's the one who wanted to get a fucking deli sandwich, and that was his whole yeah, yeah. fucking character. But he's he like teleports to this place in China to fight some big ass monster for fun to like make money on bets. But his character in Infinity War, after they fight Thanos's you know two priests or whatever. He, like, fucks off back to the Sanctum, and Tony Stark's like, where the fuck are you going? You have superpowers. Can you help us save the universe? And he says, no, somebody has to protect the Sanctum. But now, in this movie, this guy's fucking singing karaoke at a bar, getting drunk, and he's just, like, f fucking off to go fight monsters for fun. Like, where's the consistency? Does this guy respect his duty to guard the Sanctum, or is he just fucking off all the time? Yeah. And another thing, he might be the, the only man on Earth with worse facial hair than me. When I, close ups of his face made me think, motherfucker, you need to shave. That looks disgusting. And that's coming from yeah. me. Yeah. So I actually have a conspiracy theory. They want to destroy um, all the Doctor Strange, you know, lore, because in this one, Wong is made out to be like a degenerate. And yeah. then in the new Spider-Man movie, Doctor Strange is like, yeah, I'm just going to cast a spell just to change all of history. Like, no yeah, problem. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna maybe, give you a little winky wink. <laughs> this might actually be, uh, maybe that actually is plot relevant to the overarching story of like phase four. Because, yeah, if the, if the Spider-Man trailer is to be believed, Doctor Strange is a completely different character from his other movies. Like straight up, it's, it's undeniably an alteration of who he is as a person. So I'm really hoping it's like, you know, some sort of uh, brainwashing or like a clone or something. Cause otherwise these characters have been properly assassinated <laughs> by phase four. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't think that a lot of people care as much about what happens in phase four anyways. Um, I'm hyped for the Spider-Man movie if it's good, and I've liked uh, most of the Marvel TV shows so far. I thought Loki was great. I don't, I, I don't get hyped for any movie. I just go in and watch them. What about Sallow? Well, I've already seen that like 20 times. And I'm You're not still hyped. Myself up. <laughs> I'm still hyped. It came out in 1975. <laughs> You're still hyped every day, dude. <laughs> You're hyped no, for the, but, uh, the opportunity to watch it again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but like, okay. So getting back to getting back to this movie. So yeah, so he's fighting some like I don't know Hulk-looking guy. He beats him, whatever, using this portal. And then of course Shang Chi fights his sister. Of course his sister has to win because, um, you know, female power and all that kind of stuff. And there's this great line in there where his sister is talking to Aquafina, and she's like. Since my father wouldn't let me into his empire, I had to build my own. And it's like, and Aquafina's like, like, damn straight. Or she says something like that. I'm like, oh my god, like it's such an eye rolling moment. I'm like, so your dad literally conquered the entire world and you made some shitty fight club in Macau? <laughs> like, that's your empire? Okay, okay. But, anyways, spoiler alert. Um,. His dad knows exactly where they are, and I'm pretty sure that his dad sent the postcard to him to kind of bring them together yeah. so that he could bring them back to their own, um, like their home where they trained, and Shang-Chi was trained from a little boy to be an assassin because his mom was killed by these people that had it out for his dad, 
and he went and he killed the leader of the gang that killed his mom, but then he couldn't face himself, you know, and he was like Shinji and he didn't want to get into the Ava, you know, but Ikari is pulling all the strings. That's kind of what's happening here. Um, <laughs> and uh, anyways, so his dad is like, actually, you know, there's a lot of uh, parallels to Ava three plus one because okay. his because his dad because Shinji's dad in Ava three plus one wants his main goal is to bring back uh, Yui, right? That's he's literally willing to sacrifice the universe just to bring back his dead wife, and that's and then his son Shinji has to stop him, and then Shang Chi. Um, it's literally the same thing, where his dad wants to bring back his dead wife, and Shang-Chi has to stop him from doing that. Um, but it's all super predictable. So his, his mom is from this, like, mythical area that kind of reminds me of, uh, um, Shangri-La, kind of, you know, like, or whatever. I don't know. And they have to go through this maze. Oh yeah, Ben Kingsley from Iron Man 3 is in it. He's the best character in the whole film by far. I'll say this movie, I mean, I when I saw Iron Man 3 in 2013 and they had the reveal that the Mandarin was just some British actor, I, I was in the group of people that was pretty disappointed by that. I liked the, you know, from the trailers, the Mandarin was really cool. He was saying stuff like, you'll never see me coming. And I thought it was really badass and then it was just like a joke. So uh, that character was kind of removed from my brain for a long time because of the, di the, the disappointment. But this movie redeems the character so much in my eyes. And I'd say he's one of the most tragic characters in all of Marvel because he thought he was just playing a terrorist like for a TV show. Like he thought he was making a movie, but then he got arrested as a terrorist when he, he didn't fucking do anything wrong. He's just filming shit for a show. And now, like in this movie, uh, the uh, Shang-Chi's dad is the real Mandarin, but he doesn't go by that. So he arrests, or he like imprisons Ben Kingsley's character as, I guess, revenge or, or something. He's upset with him for uh, unintentionally ripping him off, like his, his identity, when he had nothing to do with it. So yeah, he's uh, he's truly a tragic character, just a stupid guy who wants yeah. to be an actor who has been fucked around by like eight different parties at this point. <laughs> and he has the one, like, like he is the funniest character the entire film. He has this little monologue about the Planet of the Apes that is better than any of the dialogue in the rest of the film. His yeah, do you think maybe Ben Kingsley <laughs> Ben Kingsley took a yeah. look at the script and said, yeah, this shit's not going to work. How about I do some touch-ups and make this actually pretty I funny? I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, because, because his stuff it, was, like, it doesn't feel like it was written by the same people who wrote the rest of the movie. His stuff was, and maybe we're just racist and only think the white guy is funny, but he maybe he's just that much of a, a better actor that he could pull off all this funny shit in ways that nobody else really could. Yeah, and I thought that like it, even at like the near the end of the battle, and you think he died, and the little pet come, you know, Morris comes up to me, goes, he goes, I'm not actually dead, I'm just acting. Yeah, you know, play along with me, and I was like, look, this is like this is he has so much more charisma than any of the other actors in the film, like when he's on screen, and yeah, maybe it's maybe it's me being racist against Asian people, but this is. As someone who, you know, a lot of my favorite films are Asian films, so, you know, whatever. But uh, um, he just has so much more charisma than a lot of the people on screen. And maybe that's the actor's problems. Maybe that's just the writer's problems. You know, maybe that's just because they weren't written that well. And the actors were working with what they could get. Although, yeah. I don't think that's the case with Aquafina. I really don't like Aquafina um, at all. Well, I can't stand her. Ben Kingsley, like... He went to like the most professional Shakespearean acting schools as a youth, and now he's like an old man with Academy Awards under his belt. He's such a prestigiously uh, professional and talented actor compared to, like, fuck, Aquafina? Is she even a fucking actress? Like, she just Dude. plays herself in everything. The, the lead in this movie has never been in another movie as far as I'm concerned. So they really did not stand a fucking chance going up against uh, Ben Kingsley. Here's the thing about Aquafina. 
It's like she made that vagina joke uh, in the bus, and I was like, of oh, fucking course she did. Of course she made a vagina joke. That's like all she's known for. Really? I, I, I don't know much about yeah. her. Yeah, she's just known for being one of those female comedians that South Park was accurately satirizing. <laughs> <laughs> the, what, she's like the Asian Amy Schumer? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And then, and then she got sort of indie stardom because she was in that movie, The Farewell, that A24 movie that yeah. I didn't see. I, I, I did I see that one. I thought it was okay. I, I wasn't that interested in it. It just it's, it, it's it no seemed Minari. like it was okay. No, like that's the thing. Like, why do the Koreans do it so much better than the Chinese? Why is it that Good the question. Koreans and the Japanese are so much better at making movies than the Chinese? <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's that's unironically true. I I don't even know how to answer that. <laughs> yeah. But no, okay. So go on, so go. On What's your with favorite Chinese movie? Can anybody in the audience answer that? What's your favorite movie that was made oh, in yeah. China? Good luck. I have, a, I have a few favorite. I have a few favorite Chinese movies actually. So well, don't, don't name them because then the comment section is gonna steal what you said. I want to see if these no, fuckers no, I'll can name, name one. Oh. Okay, okay. I won't say anything, but there are a lot of Chinese movies that I actually really like. Um, a lot of propaganda films? No, I, I'd say that a lot of my favorite Chinese movies come out of Hong Kong. And, you know, for a well, while. That's Hong not Kong part of was, China, to be fair. There was a really good Chinese movie that came out a couple years ago called Long Day's Journey Into Night. I really liked that one. It was an art film. And then there was another movie that I heard was really good. I haven't seen it yet called An Elephant Sitting Still. I heard that was really great, but it's four hours long, and you know, like to watch a four-hour long movie, I gotta set aside an entire afternoon. So yeah, you have to, hasn't you have to reschedule yet. your daily Sallow viewing <laughs> to watch something like that. Yeah, exactly. Look, I could watch Sallow twice in that span. Of time. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of jerking off in one day. Yeah, that's too much. You know, I don't want to be dry at the. I don't want to be dry come nighttime when the ladies are coming over. You know what I mean? Yeah, you got to save some for your uh, Chicago black boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, going back to the story, it tr- it just turns into a normal Marvel movie. Like, so they team up with Ben Kingsley. They go to go to this interdimensional or other dimensional space where his mom is from, and you know, it's which a place is just where- in the woods. You don't have to go through a magical yeah, portal. You just go in the woods and go through a waterfall. You just go in the woods. You just go in the woods, and all of a sudden, Pokemon is real. It's like they're just going into Pokemon Red or something like that. It's yeah. Like, all oh, all wow, the trees they... in the woods are pseudo Wudo, and they're trying to use tackle on you, and you just have to outrun them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you just got to stay in the pocket, like they say in the film. Yeah. You go stay in the, the pocket monster. And all, the... and all of a sudden, you see Pikachu, and you see. <laughs> uh, Vaporeons. Actually, some of the char- some of the monsters looked like the uh, Vaporeons and um, that type of Pokemon. Well, I- yeah, I mean, a lot of Pokemon are based off of like Chinese and Japanese mythology, so they're probably just yeah. ripping each other off. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. And so then they go to this ancient village, and his dad wants to open up this, you know, gate to like some, you know. Uh, unknown evil there because he thinks his wife is behind it because his dad i guess is a for having lived here for a thousand years he's also just a complete dumbass and thinks that yeah my wife died from this gang member but she's actually trapped behind this gate (laughs) like okay (laughs) i guess i I I guess you could believe that was it the the rings were deceiving him or a demon from the other dimension was it was a demon it was it was kind of like the green goblin situation you know, in the first Spider-Man film. He's got a you know, Jekyll and like, Hyde in his brain? I, I guess so. But he already was kind of a bad guy beforehand. And, you know, it's just kind of playing yeah. into that. But you all, you already know that since he's his dad, like, you know, shang is like, I'm going to kill my father. And it's like, you know you're not going to do that. Like, you're, like no way is Marvel going to allow Wait, that. Wait, are you telling me films. this Marvel movie ends with the villain who is also the main character's father? changing sides and committing an epic sacrifice to save the day yes oh, so the main character doesn't have to actually <laughs> do anything yes oh so exactly what's his, what's his character arc again <laughs> none uh he his character arc is that he went from a valet to uh a superhero who has magical rings 
His character arc is that he inherited his dad's magical rings. <laughs> wow. That's pretty good. That's li- that's literally it. His character arc is that he inherited his dad's magical rings. He learns nothing throughout the film other than, yeah, my dad's an asshole. And then when he wants to kill his dad, he's like, I actually don't want to kill my dad. Wow, you know what? If you gave me a gun and you had me put it up against my dad's head, I'd be like, yeah, I probably don't want to kill my dad, even if he was an asshole to me yeah, in the past. I could but, do But, you it. know, that's, <laughs> that's kind of a big commitment. You know, that's kind of a big thing to do. And he's like, wow, I actually don't want to kill my dad right now. If my dad like, was trying to open a, a dragon scale <laughs> shield portal to the the d- demon realm with fucking dragons that can suck out your soul, I'd probably shoot him. Well, and his yeah. dad is doing that. All these like soul sucking dragons are coming out. His dad is just still like, I know my wife is behind there. <laughs> like, yeah, like even after a hundred parademons have come out from from the gate, he's still trying to break it open. <laughs> Like, did, are you blind? Look up! Look behind you! What the fuck are you doing? Clearly, complete, your wife's not in there! There's a million demons coming out! He's a complete retard. Like, his dad is... <laughs> you know, it, his dad is just like the thousand-year-old retard. It, it shows you that uh, boomers aren't always as smart as they think they are. You think this guy who's a That's thousand really... years old is a boomer? <laughs> He's the thousand-year-old boomer. <laughs> he just wanted to grill with his wife, for God's sakes. Yeah, exactly. That's all he wanted. He wanted to grill with his wife, but instead he caused the souls of many people to be extracted from their bodies. Yeah. And I was also thinking, like, how do you eat souls? Or is it, like, their life force or something? I don't know. Because, you know, he had it taken from his, so is he... Is he burning in hell, or is he just being digested in some sort of dragon, you know, uh, stomach? Well, uh, have you seen Black Panther? Yes, I have. Yes, so Black Panther reveals that there is an afterlife, but only for African tribal people. (laughs) So he definitely went to hell. (laughs) Yeah. Actually, you know what? This The whole third act of this reminded me of Black Panther a lot. Um, with the big CGI monsters and a war with a bunch of uh, factions that we don't give a shit about? Yeah. Ex- well, exactly, yeah. Because, um, you know, Black Panther ends on that big war between a whole bunch of factions we don't give a shit about. And, um, like, we're like, I don't know who any of these people are. Like, I was just introduced to them five minutes ago, and now they're fighting each other, and now they're teaming up, you know... And it's like, wow, they were just killing each other. Now they're like, oh, I guess we'll work together, just like in Black Panther. And the villain is like, wow, this villain is, you know, he he might be a bad guy, but I can understand his motives. And uh, he's just going to die alongside Black Panther. And Black Panther is going to be like, you know what? I don't hold anything against you. The same thing happened in Shang-Chi. It's the exact same third act. Um, Except in this one, you have a you know, two dragons fighting each other so the scalies can, you know, jerk off in the theater or something like that. (laughs) Um. (laughs) Hey, I'll have you know that One Piece is currently building up to a giant dragon versus dragon battle and it's complete Kino. It's fucking great. Uh, I think this movie should have taken a page out of One Piece. Look, I'm an anime fan, okay? Although I'm not exactly a One Piece fan because... I feel, I feel like if I jump in now, it's just going to take me the next, like, ten years to actually catch up. But um, Well, that's, now is the you know, perfect time to do it, because the story's going to end in, like, six or seven or eight years, and it's better to, you know, be caught up before all the spoilers come out, right? You don't want to know what the One Piece is before, yeah. you know. Yeah, now, no, now's I, the I time to just, catch up. I think I'll just wait for the Netflix adaptation. I don't um, think they're going to make it to the One Piece in that. <laughs> And, uh, the actors will no, all be but, 50 years old. <laughs> but, but um, you know, I'm a big fan of, like, big monsters fighting each other. You know, like, I like animes like the OA and I like uh, um, Evangelion and stuff. But at the end of Shang-Chi, it's the, the fight between the dragon and, I don't know, uh, I was, what, what was it, like... Red eyes, black dragon, or whatever, you know, blue eyes, white dragon was <laughs> <guess> so. <laughs> uh, to, to do some epic uh, Yu Gi Oh references here. Um, 
you know, it just wasn't exciting. I mean, but that goes for a lot of the action in this. A lot of the action was like over edited. Like it just kept cutting. It was like, dot, 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 dot. I was like, I don't know what the hell I'm looking at right now. You know, you're cutting too fast. When you're watching like a Jackie Chan movie, you know, like Drunken Master or Police Story or something like that, you see the action and you're like, wow, like he's actually doing this. And then this, it's like, they're cutting around to like, you know, obscure the fact that anything is actually being done. And then of course with the dragon stuff, it's all CGI. So I don't know, I yeah. just lose interest. And I'm like, well, oh, so this speaking of going around. Speaking of losing interest, I would rather uh, not spend the rest of my Saturday night talking about this fucking cape shit. So let's wrap <laughs> this one up so I can go do anything else. Would yeah, you say it's Kino? Here. Is it 10 rings out of 10? I'd say it's a solid five rings out of 10. Is that based on your Letterboxd review where you gave it two and a half stars? Yes. Oh, okay. I think, I, I mean, I think that's fair. It's like the most like mediocre, just sort of like middle of the line. It's a Marvel movie, right? You're going in, you expect a Marvel movie. You're going to get a Marvel movie. That's it. That, yeah, that, I'd it. say like, it's, the, it is pretty middle of the road as far as the cinematic universe goes. It's definitely better than like a Captain Marvel or yeah. the f- first two Thor movies. Like this has a little more going on than some of those stinkers. But Yeah, but but the second Thor movie was a solid 2 out of 10. That movie sucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'd say it's probably... A little below Iron Man 2, because at least Iron Man, I mean, Iron Man, um, this movie had Ben Kingsley, which is great, but Iron Man 2 had, uh, uh, god damn, what the fuck is that guy's name? Uh, I always forget his name. Let me look. The guy who played Justin Hammer. He's a, he's a, Iron Man. Iron Man 2, Justin Hammer. Mickey Rourke. No, 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 no. Although I really do like Mickey Rourke. Yeah. Uh, Sam Rockwell. Yeah, Sam Rockwell. Why do I always forget his name? He's one of my consistently favorite actors, and I just yeah, he's just like a brain great. hole. Yeah, like Moon. Moon was a great film. Yeah, um, and he was the best part of Three Billboards. Yeah, big time. Although, he, and also, actually, uh, before <laughs> before we end this, that was the one tweet, or not tweet, but DM that Digibro sent me. Was, was that asking he, he me saw three saw... billboards? Yeah. What did you say? Yeah. And I said, can I get the, f- the footage of you fighting Ethan Ralph? Because <laughs> Gamer from reply? Mars asked me to. No, I got no reply. So <laughs> I... <laughs> well, that's too bad. Too bad. I want the Maybe next the time, footage. Digi. Ne- maybe next time, Digi. You, you were like, oh, uh-oh. Kino's friends with Mumkey. I guess I can't be talking about movies with him anymore. Oh, uh, is that Whatever. what happened? I don't care. Do I really live rent free in uh, that beautiful woman's head? <laughs> Maybe. In, in my Maybe Discord so. server, people like they love posting pictures of Digi with like the giant hobo beard that goes all the way down <laughs> to like, like all the way, you know, just it's like ten feet long beard. And I'll always reply and say, "Wow, she is so beautiful." Like, Digi looked better when he was wearing the weird glasses and just the weird guy talking about anime. I don't know. Trying to be the the John Lennon uh, pothead genius of anime with a giant disgusting yeah. beard. Yeah, honestly, though. You know? Honestly. like that Sometimes was, you that gotta was embrace than... who you really are and become uh, a, a cutie pie girl. That was honestly better than trying to be a uh, um, waifu, you know, or whatever. A uh, homeless waifu <laughs> living in an RV. <laughs> well, uh, that's... Well, whatever. Uh, I don't have anything about... I don't have anything against Digi. I just thought that was funny that it was brought up. Yeah. Um, well, know. do you have... Uh, we both agree uh, Candyman and Shang-Chi are both Kino. Go check them out. Uh, when you yeah, buy you your, know buy, when you buy your ticket, ask if you can pay double because you want to support the studios <laughs> in this trying time. Yeah, I would say too that um, you know uh, what you should do with Candyman, especially, is 
whatever you pay at the cinema, so not just your ticket, but also your soda, your popcorn, whatever, you should take, you should do like an equal amount of that money and give it to Black Lives Matter. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, that reminds me then, of, I, I forgot to mention this during our synopsis of Candyman, but I think that the movie is actually a metaphor for the N-word. And if white people say the N-word too many times, they should expect to get killed. <laughs> That's totally what it is. Like, if you're a whitey and you say this one word, then, like, nobody's going to feel sorry for you when the black guy comes up and hash uh, slinging slashers you to death. But if a black woman in the back of a police car says... <laughs> you can just, like, cut this out or bleep it out, I guess. Oh, no, you can say it. <laughs> I'll give you the pass. I'm not gonna, uh, yeah, you're not going to give me the pass, dude. Do you know who my audience is? <laughs> they're film people. Uh, they're not going to give me the pass. Uh, but if a you black lady Nasheed, in the back... Would Trick Nasheed give us the pass? I think Since Trick we, Nasheed we would this movie. give us the pass. We yeah. did love this movie. I gave it a 5 out of 5 on Letterboxd. <laughs> <laughs> we should ask him if we can be in the sequel. Dude, dude, I totally would. I, you know what? I actually kind of agree with a lot of his points too. <laughs> he he has you an know? interesting uh, interpretation of history. I'll give him that, and he's very funny no, unintentionally. He, no, he's he's hilarious. I love Tariq the Sheet. Um, yeah, we should we. You know what? Uh, we should just like anyone who's listening to this, and this is how we'll know that you listen to the end of the podcast. Uh, go to Twitter and at Tariq Nasheed and say, have Kino and Mumkey in Buck Breaking 2. And then tell or, us or that you did that Or just ask him if he'll, uh, tell him that we want to do an interview with him or like have him on the podcast. Maybe he can choose yeah. his favorite black film and we can all review it together. Yeah, exactly. Like, I would, obviously, honestly, Mumkey and I. I would love that. Yeah, we would, like, I would love that too. You know, that'd be that'd be fun as fuck. <laughs> yeah, let's make it happen. That'd let's, be awesome. uh, let's let's get in Trick yes. Machine's DMs and and get him on the show. <laughs> yes. So everyone, that's what we'll know that you're a true fan. Uh, it's just gonna be Robel and maybe a few others, but uh, um, some other POCs. Uh, yeah. So that sounds great. But yeah, Candyman. Actually, that does. Yeah, it, and it's also like with Candyman, it's say my name, which is the same thing they said about Michael Brown. Right? Oh, like, the cigarette say guy? My name. Yeah, the, the well, Cigarello. Um, hands oh, that's up, what he was shoot. selling? Well, wasn't he, like, trying to, like, basically uh, give weed for Cigarellos or something like I that? I don't know. I don't, I don't care. Know. Hey, don't Kino Corner, where I'm can people find guy. you online? Let's do the plugs and get the fuck out of here. People can find me online on stormfront.com. <laughs> 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 they can find me online at uh, youtube.com slash reactor. Okay. Um, Twitter.com slash Tim Pool. Okay. Um, that's where you can find me online. All right. Well, uh, thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>